and the University of the Incarnate Word. Congratulations, Bishop Janik, on your ordination as Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of San Antonio. I and all of us at St. Mary's University look forward to working with you to deepen and enrich the faith of San Antonio's Catholic community, to better serve them and all those in need of Christ's infinite mercy. God bless you and congratulations. The University of the Incarnate Word would like to congratulate the very Reverend Gary Yannick on his ordination to Auxiliary Bishop of San Antonio on this truly historic day. Founded in 1881 by the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word, UIW exists to inspire students to live life to its fullest sense with the genuine abundance of God's love and grace. Our history is founded in service to others and it remains one of our core values today. We pray that Auxiliary Bishop Yannick will continue to thrive in his call to be of service. Father has, our family has known Father Gary Yannick for nearly 40 years, and he is a man of the Spirit. He's a pastor's pastor, and we want to pray in a special way as we prepare for this liturgy that the Holy Spirit will anoint him in a whole new way today and empower him in a whole new way to give birth to Jesus in a whole new way even as Mary was overshadowed by the Spirit, conceived and gave birth to Jesus. We pray this same prayer for ourselves in this liturgy, that it threw out the beautiful signs and symbols, and the rites of this liturgy, that the Holy Spirit will overshadow us, and we too can give birth to Jesus in a beautiful and wonderful way. So I'm going to ask you to sing, Holy is His Name, you're going to have to sing extra loud because you have those masks on, okay? So sing with me and let's pray and ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit to overshadow us. Sing holy. Your 
voices now. Sing it out. Sing holy, holy, holy is His name. Just our voices. Good afternoon and welcome to St. Mark the Evangelist Church in San Antonio, Texas. It's a beautiful sun-kissed day and we are welcoming you to the solemn pontifical mass of ordination and installation of the Most Reverend Gary W. Yannick, who will be the 15th Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of San Antonio. We see now the entrance procession is about to begin after that very beautiful introduction by John Michael Talbot. St. Mark's is one of the largest churches in the archdiocese, normally seating uh, over 1,200 people. Because of the COVID restrictions, uh, only about half of the seats will be filled today. Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Sierra the Metropolitan Archbishop of the Province of San Antonio will be our main celebrant today and two co-consecrators will be with him. Auxiliary Bishop Michael Boulette of the Archdiocese of San Antonio and Bishop Brendan Cahill who is the Bishop of the Diocese of Victoria. You can see now that the deacons are processing in they will be followed by the priests of the Archdiocese, many priests from the Diocese of Victoria, and other dioceses around the state of Texas. San Antonio who are here today are representing 170 parishes and missions of the Archdiocese. Our Archdiocese is a, an Archdiocese of approximately 1.2 million Catholic people. Twenty-four bishops from all over Texas and neighboring states, as well as Archbishop Christophe Pierre, who is the Apostolic Nuncio, are joining together today at this ordination. I mentioned that Bishop-elect Yannick will be the 15th Auxiliary Bishop ordained for the Archdiocese of San Antonio, uh, the only currently active Auxiliary Bishop for the Archdiocese is Bishop Mike Boulette. But we have a history of truly wonderful and amazing men, starting with Bishop Stephen Levin, who was ordained at Auxiliary in 1956, Patrick Flores, who later became Archbishop, Hugo Gerberman, Raimundo Peña, Ricardo Ramirez, Charles Grauman, 
Bernard Popp, Edmund Carmody, Joseph Galante, Bishop John Yanta, who later became Bishop of Amarillo, and you might have noticed him uh, seated already. Uh, Bishop Yanta is of uh, sound mind, uh, but uh, the years have taken their toll on his body. Bishop Thomas Flanagan, who passed away just a year ago. Bishop Patrick Zurich, who is now the Bishop of Amarillo. Bishop Oscar Cantu, who is now the Bishop of San Jose, California. And then, of course, our own uh, Bishop Michael Boudet. When I mentioned that Archbishop Gustavo was the Metropolitan Archbishop, what that means is that he is the leading bishop in a province. Uh, that is a grouping of dioceses around an archdiocese. And so there are two archdioceses in the state of Texas, the Archdiocese of San Antonio and the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston. His Eminence, Daniel Cardinal DiNardo, will be with us today. He is the Archbishop of Galveston, Houston, Texas. We have a wide array of the people of God who are here with us today lay people from all across the Archdiocese and the Diocese of Victoria, men and women religious in consecrated life. Of course, we saw many of the deacons at the beginning of our procession today, and uh, several hundred priests. And what a blessing it is for all of us priests to welcome our brother Gary, now to be a bishop in our church. Bishop Gary Yannick was born in El Campo, Texas, and uh, grew up in Palacios, which he regards as his hometown. The multicultural reality of Texas is very familiar to him. He's very proud of his own Czech heritage. Many uh, Czech people immigrated to Texas in the 19th century, uh, German people, uh, of course, there were Spanish and Mexican people who were here, Native Americans who were here. And uh, now we see uh, Bishop-elect Gary, accompanied by his two chaplains. I mentioned that Bishop Gary grew up in Palacios. At that time, Victoria, what is now the Diocese of Victoria, was part of the Archdiocese of San Antonio, being elevated as its own diocese some years later. So when Bishop Gary studied in the seminary, he was originally studying for the Archdiocese, and because uh, Victoria was his home, uh, that became the diocese in which he was a member. Now we see the bishops as they make their way to address the altar. There we see His Eminence, Daniel Cardinal DiNardo of the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston. There is Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Sierra, Archbishop of the Archdiocese of San Antonio, and Metropolitan Bishop of the San Antonio Province.
Bishop Yannick's family is with us today also. His father passed away in 1998, but his mother, his sisters, and his brother are here with us today as a part of this beautiful celebration. Archbishop Gustavo now incenses the altar, the incense, part of our worship. The altar, of course, represents the place of sacrifice, the table of the heavenly banquet. Perhaps all of us can pray now for Bishop Gary as he enters into this very solemn moment. Pope Francis last year in addressing newly ordained bishops spoke to them saying, our mission is to be for the church and for the world, the sacraments of God's closeness. Our world seeks this divine closeness, he said. The church herself is lost when she loses the life-giving tenderness of the Good Shepherd. And we know that Bishop Gary will bring this tenderness with him to the Archdiocese of San Antonio. Padre del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amen. La paz del Señor esté con todos ustedes. Y con tu Espíritu. Please be seated for a moment. In the name of the Archbishop, I invite all of us to share the joy and our thanksgiving to God for what the triune God is about to accomplish as Bishop-elect Gary Yannick is ordained as the Auxiliary Bishop for the Archdiocese of San Antonio by the laying on of hands of Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Sierra, missionary of the Holy Spirit. Movidos por el Espíritu Santo, como un solo cuerpo, Unidos a la cabeza que es Cristo, damos gracias al Padre Celestial con gritos de júbilo por el llamado que hace a este hijo tu, suyo, a ser sucesor de los apóstoles para bien de su pueblo santo. Bienvenidos todos. In the name of the Archbishop, I welcome the faithful of the Archdiocese of San Antonio, whether present in this assembly or joining us through Catholic Television of San Antonio and the various media. That is, the children, the youth, the young adults, men and women, families, the infirm and the homebound, and our beloved seniors, the incarcerated, and those curious about the Christ we disciple and of whom we preach. We greet representatives and members of the many Catholic organizations who announce the good news of Jesus Christ in our archdiocese. We open our hearts in joyful welcome and gratitude to Rosemarie Yannick, the bishop-elect's mom, and his siblings, Cindy Yannick Eunuch and her husband Larry Eunuch, Alan uh, Jan Jan Janik and his wife, Jeannie. And we carry in our hearts this day prayerfully, and we ask you to join us in prayer for Sharon Yannak uh, Folten and her husband, Jake. Sharon is in the hospital now, very ill, and we pray, and Jake is by her side. This is his sister, so please pray for them. And all the extended family and friends here for this glorious day. We are so grateful for the love and support that you have offered to Bishop Alec Gary during his entire lifetime. To our beloved consecrated religious and men who, who, uh, who serve the people of God so graciously, who offer our sincere affection and joyful thanks. You have labored so effectively among and for God's people. What a joy it is to greet you and to welcome you. Hermanos y hermanas consagrados, su presencia aquí 
y su servicio al Señor, a su pueblo, para los sus mismos es fuente de inspiración y confianza en Dios que ama a sus ovejas y sí preocupa por ellas. We are blessed to greet our brother priests from the Diocese of Victoria in Texas who have journeyed with Bishop Alec Gary for years. What a joy it is and what a gift you bring to us. And to those priest friends from Bishop Gary from other places, please know our gratitude and our thanks. Brother priests of the Archdiocese of San Antonio, we are blessed by your presence and by your enthusiastic welcome of the news of our Holy Father Francis's gift to us. We know you will walk with Bishop Alec Gary in the service of the people of God. Porque lo conozco. También sé que el obispo Yanak, como buen pastor, tendrá el presbiterio del San Antonio en un lugar más privilegiado de su corazón. Brother bishops, we are graced by your presence today, your prayerful presence. We have already understood that you believe that our body of bishops is enhanced this day. Bishop Cahill, simply thank you for your assistance and for your gift to us. Our Bishop Christophe Pierre, Apostolic Nuncio, and therefore our personal representative from the Holy Father Francis, our celebration is more graced by your presence today. We have known your complete dedication to our Holy Father and your faithful and cogent communication of his thought to us. It has been a gift. Aquí tiene su casa. Votre maçon est ici. Cardinal Daniel DiNardo, Metropolitan Archbishop of our neighboring province of Galveston, Houston. We celebrate your prayerful presence this day. We are blessed that you are here and are grateful for your service in Texas and to our Holy Father and Council. Therefore, let us stand once again. Let us assemble and continue to celebrate what the Holy Spirit is about to do among us. Please stand. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate worthily these sacred mysteries, let us ask the Lord to forgive our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my fault, fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. El Señor Todopoderoso, tenga misericordia de nosotros, perdone todos nuestros pecados, y nos lleve a la vida eterna. Amen.
let us pray. Dios nuestro, que por pura generosidad de tu gracia quieres poner hoy al frente de tu iglesia de San Antonio a tu siervo, el presbítero Gary Yanak, concédele ejercer dignamente el ministerio episcopal, ser auténtico testigo de Cristo en todas partes, el que vive y reina contigo en la unidad del Espíritu Santo y es Dios por los siglos de los siglos. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Malthus, Paul had the presbyters of the church at Ephesus summoned. When they came to him, he addressed them. Keep watch over yourselves and over the whole flock of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers, in which you tend the church of God that he acquired with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come among you, and they will not spare the flock. And from your own group, men will come forward perverting the truth to draw the disciples away after them. So be vigilant and remember that for three years, night and day, I unceasingly admonished each of you with tears. And now I commend you to God and to that gracious word of his that can build you up and give you the inheritance among all who were consecrated. When Paul had finished speaking, he knelt down and prayed with them all. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 96. Cuenten las maravillas del Señor a todas las naciones. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim his marvelous deeds. Cuenten las
Lectura de la Carta del Apóstol San Pablo a los Efesios Hermanos, yo, Pablo, prisionero por la causa del Señor, los exhorto a que lleven una vida digna del llamamiento que han recibido. Sean siempre humildes y amables, sean comprensivos y soportense mutuamente con amor. Esfuércense en mantenerse unidos en el espíritu con el vínculo de la paz. Porque no hay más que un solo cuerpo, un solo espíritu, como es también solo una la esperanza del llamamiento que ustedes han recibido. Un solo Señor, una sola fe, un solo bautismo, un solo Dios y Padre de todos, que reina sobre todos, actúa a través de todos y vive en todos. Cada uno de nosotros ha recibido la gracia en la medida en que Cristo se la ha dado. Él fue quien que concedió a unos ser apóstoles, a otros ser profetas, a otros ser evangelizadores, a otros ser pastores y maestros. Y esto para capacitar a los fieles a fin de que desempeñando debidamente su tarea, construyan el cuerpo de Cristo, hasta que todos lleguemos a estar unidos en la fe y en el conocimiento del Hijo de Dios, y lleguemos a ser hermanos, hombres perfectos, que alcance, alcancemos en todas sus dimensiones la plenitud de Cristo. Palabra de Dios. With the conclusion of the second reading, the epistle to the Ephesians from St. Paul, we prepare now for the proclamation of the gospel. The Archbishop blesses the incense and the deacon of the gospel will receive his blessing from the archbishop for the proclamation. The congregation will stand as the Alleluia verse is proclaimed. to the congregation and walks in procession to the ambo from which it will be proclaimed. In our Catholic faith, we believe that Christ is present in the Word. He is the Word which is proclaimed and through which we find our salvation. of the Gospels with the sacred incense.
gospel will be proclaimed by Deacon Michael Pavelic. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will be my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Deacon Pavelic brings the book of the Gospels to Archbishop Gustavo who kisses the words of Christ and blesses the people of God with the Holy Gospel. Now before the homily, we will have the calling of the candidate. Father Gary will be called officially to accept his appointment and ordination as the 15th Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of San Antonio. Please stand. begin with the singing of the Veni Creator Spiritus, meaning come, Holy Spirit, come.
after invoking the presence of the Holy Spirit, Bishop-elect Gary will be presented by his chamberlains, by his chaplains, Father Carlos Velasquez and Father Greg Korenik. The two principal co-consecrators are seated next to the Archbishop. To the Archbishop's left is Bishop Michael Boulet, Auxiliary of the Archdiocese of San Antonio. Most Reverend Father, the Church of San Antonio asks you to ordain this priest, Gary Yannick, to the responsibility of the Episcopate. Reverendissimo Padre, La Iglesia de San Antonio pide que ordenes obispo al presbítero Gary Yannick. Have you a mandate from the Apostolic See? We have. Let it be read. And now the papal bull uh, proclaiming Gary Yannick as Bishop will be Your Eminence, Cardinal Di Nardo, expressed Your Excellency, by Metropolitan Archbishop Garcia Silla, Your Archbishop Excellency, Christophe Bishop Boulet. This is a French name. <laughs> Your Excellency, Bishop Cahill. Your Excellency, Auxiliary Bishop Elect Yanak. This is not French. My brother, archbishops and bishops, dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious, and lay faithful of the church in St. Antonio, dear friends. I am truly pleased to be with you as Father Gary Yanak is ordained to the fullness of the priesthood and begins his ministry as auxiliary bishop of St. Antonio in close fraternal communion with the chief shepherd of this local church, Archbishop Garcia Silla, Bishop-elect Yanak has distinguished himself as a pastor, a counselor, canon lawyer, and vicar general in the Diocese of Victoria. And we greet here the Bishop of Victoria, thanking him for this beautiful gift. Here he is. I think we can thank him for that. As a reference to Bishop Cahill, who is seated to Archbishop Gustavo's right. More than uh, 30 years ago, St. John Paul II visited St. Antonio. Remember that? Yeah. And in his homily, he said, I quote, In Jesus Christ, the world has truly known the mystery of forgiveness, mercy, and reconciliation which is proclaimed by God's word today. At this time, God's inexhaustible mercy to us obliges us to be reconciled among ourselves. This makes practical demands on the church in Texas and the Southwest of the United States. This is still a quotation from the Holy Father. It means bringing hope and love wherever there is division and alienation. Your history, says the Pope, registers a meeting of cultures, indigenous and immigrant, constantly moving towards reconciliation and harmony. This land is a crossroads, standing at the border of two great nations, and experiencing both the enrichment and also the complications which arise from this circumstance. You are thus a symbol and a kind of laboratory testing America's commitment to her founding moral principles and human values." End of quote. Auxiliary Bishop Yanak. We are confident that drawing upon your priestly and pastoral experience in the Diocese of Victoria, you will ably assist Archbishop Garcia Silla in meeting the challenges 
at this crossroads, bringing hope and love wherever there is alienation. I commend you to the Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Saint Joseph, her spouse and protector of the Church, as well as to Saint Anthony of Padua and Saint Mark, asking for their intercession in your Episcopal ministry that you may radiate the joy of the Gospel to the whole Church in Saint Antonio. And now, with great joy, allow me to read for you the English translation of the Apostolic Letter of Appointment, which is written, as you know, in Latin. Yeah, unless you want me to read it in Latin. But <laughs> <laughs> and it will be shown to you later by the Auxiliary Bishop. Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God, to your beloved son, to our beloved son, Gary Yanak, from the clergy of the Diocese of Victoria in Texas, and until now, Vicar General and Chancellor there, appointed auxiliary of the Archdiocese of San Antonio, and named titular bishop of the See of Dionysiana. Greetings and apostolic blessing. The word of the Lord, which goes forth from his mouth, does not return to him void, but must accomplish his will and achieve the end for which is he sent it. By the task of authentically interpreting the word of God, whether written or handed on, has been entrusted exclusively to the living teaching office of the Church, which, as mother and teacher, proclaims it to all people of good will through the ministry of bishops and priests. In order that this mission of proclaiming the gospel might be carried out more effectively and be provided for the pastoral needs of his community, our venerable brother, Gustavo Garcia Silla, a member of the missionaries of the Holy Spirit, Metropolitan Archbishop of San Antonio, not long ago requested an auxiliary bishop. We, for our part, well disposed to such a request, gladly grant his petition. And so, we judge that you, beloved son, are suitable for this responsibility, given that you are outstanding in spiritual life, practical experience, sound faith, prudence, scholarship, charity, and effective pastoral works. These are many qualities, isn't it? Therefore, upon careful consultation with the Congregation for Bishops, from the fullness of our apostolic authority, we name you Bishop of the titular see of Dionysiana, at the same time appointing you Auxiliary of the Archdiocese of St. Antonio, conferring upon you all the rights and obligations which belong to this office according to the norm of law. You may receive Episcopal ordination anywhere outside the city of Rome from any Catholic bishop, the liturgical norms being observed. However, prior to this, as established by ecclesiastical law, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in this sea. Finally, beloved son, we exhort you to exercise your ministry in close communion with your Archbishop and to be prepared to serve continually the people of God under the protective patronage of the Blessed Virgin Mary to whom at that most ready intercessor the Church in uncertain and anxious times has been accustomed to have recourse. Given in Rome at the Lateran on the 15th day of the month of February, in the year of the Lord 2021, the eighth of our pontificate, and it is signed Francis.
The choir sings, Thanks Be to God. Bishop Elect Yannick now shows the papal bull to the priests of the archdiocese and deacons and also to the lay people who are present. He is accompanied by his chaplains. Bowl is a special document from the Holy Father which authorizes this ordination to the episcopacy and uh, as you see it on your television screen you'll notice that it is uh, affixed with a wax seal and a ribbon which uh, uh, is the Holy Father's seal and it is signed personally by the Holy Father Pope Francis. Bishop Yannick received his theological education here in San Antonio, having attended Assumption Seminary of the Appellate School of Theology, and later at Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C., where he received his licentiate in canon law. These last number of years, he has served as the Vicar General and Chancellor for the Diocese of Victoria, as well as Rector of their Cathedral. Bishops are seated, and the homily by Archbishop Dear people Gustavo of God. Garcia Sierra. We are here on this day because of the work of the Holy Spirit, who continues to bring life to the Church by raising up successors to the Apostles in proclaiming the risen Christ to the world and guiding the Church with shepherds' hearts. Hoy seremos testigos de la acción del Espíritu Santo en la vida del creyente en este sacerdote que ha sido elegido, llamado a vivir como pastor con el corazón de Cristo, sirviendo como obispo, en el gobierno de la caridad y el servicio, predicando la palabra y santificando con los sacramentos. We celebrate this ordination in the season of Easter 
as we rejoice in the Paschal mystery of Christ dying and rising, which assures us of his presence with us forever. I ask all of you here today to pray for our brother Gary. No solo hoy, sino siempre. He shall need our support and strength in order to carry out this apostolic calling he has received. My brother Gary, I wish now to share some reflections with you today in light of your calling, your response to this call to the service of the apostles, all in the light of the grain of wheat which must die to itself in order to bring forth life. Reflexionemos juntos a la luz del grano de trigo que solamente muriendo a sí mismo dará fruto y está en abundancia. El llamado debe de tornarse en don. Este es mi cuerpo que será entregado por ustedes y esta es mi sangre que será derramada for ustedes. Throughout the days of your announcement and then the preparations for this ordination day, I have thought about the importance of God's call and the response of the human person. In truth, it is a central biblical motive repeated many times. We have seen it in the call of Abraham and the response of Abraham and Sarah in striking out from Ur and following the voice of the Lord. We have seen it in the call of Moses and his response to form a new people, uniquely God's own, leading them to the very edge of the promised land. We have seen it in the call of the prophets in their response to fidelity. Even when the message they were to deliver was hard. El llamado y la respuesta se sitúan en el corazón de la historia de la salvación. Today, my brother Gary, you have been called. And you're answering with grace and humility. You are a man of integrity. Your reception and cooperation to the call as a grace from God will lead you to give it and share it to build up the body of Christ. The source is always the Holy Spirit. La vida de la gracia tiene siempre como fuente al Espíritu Santo. Tendrá siempre la misión de infundir vida. Give what you are and what you have. Y recuerda que el Espíritu Santo es fecundo y cuanto toca, diviniza y salva. I propose a reflection on the most important call exhibited in the sacred scriptures, the call of the Blessed Virgin Mary. When she was but a, a girl in the far away small town of Nazareth. Contemplemos el llamado de María, la mujer del Espíritu. We can suppose that she was like most young women, wondering and hoping what the future might hold for her. Probably, she assumed that she would marry Joseph, to whom she had been betrothed, raise some children, and be another wife and mother like the others of Nazareth. 
what her personal ambitions or desires were, we do not know. But one day in her youth, everything was disrupted. Her plans, her hopes, her dreams were to be set aside as she heard the voice of the angel Gabriel announcing God's call to bear the Messiah, Jesus, the War Incarnate, who would be God's own Son and the Savior of the world. The Scriptures tells us that she pondered for a moment before offering her answer. What a moment that must have been for her. We might suppose that she was surprised and should have said no, but she did not. Without fanfare or drama, she simply says, be done to me according to your word. In that moment, whatever her own plans, dreams, and desires may have been, melted away. And she gave herself completely to the will of God. This took place in history only by the power of the Holy Spirit and Mary's response. Maria experimentó el llamado en su corazón por la intervención del Espíritu Santo y respondió con generosidad, hágase, hágase, hágase en mí, según tu palabra. And from that moment, all human history was never the same. Like the grain of wheat, she died to herself. So that new life, a life of grace, will change the world, could spring forth. Gracias a María hay redención, iglesia y eucaristía y salvación del género humano. Su sí nos llena de esperanza para nosotros decir sí a la obra de Dios, dispuestos a amar hasta el fin. Self-surrendered, surrendering love. Self-surrendering love. Ella nos lleva a recordar a Jesús, a ser presencia de Cristo vivo en el tiempo presente de la humanidad. My brother, you have answered in a similar way. With humility and trust, you have made yourself available for this great work of the Holy Spirit in this moment of the church's life. Like today's readings from the Acts of the Apostles and the letter of Ephesians account for, in the case of St. Paul and the overseers of the Christian flock in Ephesus. With humility, gentleness, and patience, you have responded to God's call in each moment of the past. And your faithful ministry has touched the hearts and souls of so many people. But now, God calls you and equips you for an even more profound self-sacrifice for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature to the extent of the full stature of Christ, who is the head. Whatever dreams and plans you had a few weeks ago are now set aside. Like the Blessed Mothers, you are saying yes. And in saying yes to God, you will, like her, encounter moments of great beauty and joy, but also of great suffering and self-emptying. You, my brother, are now like the grain of wheat which falls to the earth, and you now set aside everything, ready for anything, as you respond to the call from God 
for his church in this moment. In the way it is, el mundo y la iglesia necesitan creyentes dispuestos a responder a la gracia con un sí como el de María. Tu hermano has dicho sí. Aquí estoy para hacer, Señor, tu voluntad. Haz de mí lo que tú quieras. Gary, entrégate. Dónate. Uniendo tu voluntad a la del Padre para ser triturado, crucificado y repartido. Para ser grano de trigo en las manos del Padre. En favor de tus hermanos. Sé un obispo eucarístico. Be bread of life. Sé pan bueno. El amor ha encarnado de verdad. La estructura mana del cuerpo real del Señor, del costado abierto de Cristo, dando así el Espíritu, vida y vida en abundancia, vida eterna. No tengas miedo, Dios te cuida como posesión suya. This moment is a special moment in the life of the church, especially here in Texas. When you left El Campo and then Palacios and then El Campo again, once again and came to the seminary, Victoria was part of the archdiocese. When Victoria was elevated to a diocese, you became a member of that presbyterate. But from then until now, so much has happened. Our state has grown at an incredible pace. From the time your ordination to now, San Antonio is twice the size. As population has grown so rapidly. Our faith once was easily taken for granted in our neighborhoods and small communities. As in itself challenged as many young people have grown distant from their roots. And the church is often under attack from within and without. Social wounds from injustices and misguided ideologies have hurt us, have hurt so many people. And in this past year, all of us had been touched by the pandemic, a real situation who affected real people all over the world. There are so many challenges for us, my brother. And I look forward to your assistance together with our Bishop Mike and the priest and laity of the Archdiocese as we move forward to meet the challenges of this moment in our history and what the Lord we will place before us. We are called to be transformed by hope in order to build our tomorrow. Thank you for helping us to bring forth faith to our culture. Tú has manifestado tu deseo de trabajar por el reino de Dios. Sí. Trabajaremos en discernimiento continuo, manifestando la verdad con la ayuda del Espíritu Santo. Somos todos y cada uno responsables. Unidos diremos un sí generoso a Jesucristo, trabajando con la gracia del llamado 
en la unidad querida por el Señor, que sean uno, Padre, como tú y yo somos uno. Así el mundo creerá que hemos sido enviados. Es Dios en nosotros hasta que Él sea todo en todos. Well, the challenges are great. The grace of God abounds all the more. You will find among the faithful of the Archdiocese great dynamism, deep faith, a longing for what is true and right and good. You will find enormous energy and the desire to move forward under the direction of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. In this time of new evangelization, creating a culture of encounter and accompanying our brothers and sisters in the pilgrimage of faith as instruments of mercy and peace. And while the sacrifices will be many, the fruits of your labors will be many more, dear friend. So don't fear to be the grain of wheat. God has greater dreams and plans for you than you ever did for yourself. Encuentra la alegría en el servicio. To all of you, brothers and sisters, and people of faith, let us join with our brother Gary in our willingness to be the grain of wheat that dies to itself, embracing the sacrifices so that the whole world may be redeemed by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Con el sacrificio de Cristo, seamos un solo cuerpo. Seamos una víctima con Él. Seamos uno con nuestros hermanos, todos en favor de la Iglesia, diciendo sí al Padre, como Jesús, como María, por el que es el amor, por el Espíritu Santo. Let us all listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and simply say yes when we are called. Adelante y arriba. The homily by Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Sierra. The rite of ordination of Bishop Gary Yannick will now continue. He will make his promises of election to Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Sierra. and rule of the Holy Fathers ordains that a bishop-elect is to be questioned in the presence of the people on his resolve to uphold the faith and discharge his duty. And so, dear brother, do you resolve by the grace of the Holy Spirit to discharge until death the office entrusted to us by the apostles, which we are about to pass on to you by the laying on of our hands? Do you resolve to preach the gospel of Christ with constancy and fidelity? I am. Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith, entire and incorrupt, as handed down by the apostles and preserved in the church everywhere and at all times? Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain the unity of that body together with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of St. Peter, the apostle? I am. Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed apostle Peter? I am. Do you resolve to guide the holy people of God in the way of salvation as a devoted father, and sustain them with the help of your fellow ministers, the priests and deacons? Do you resolve for the sake of the Lord's name 
to be welcoming and merciful to the poor, to strangers, and to all who are in need? Do you resolve, as a good shepherd, to seek out the sheep who stray and gather them into the Lord's flock? Finally, do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for the holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? May God, who has begun the work, this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. And now, after the reception of his promises, the church now invokes the supplication of all the saints through the prayer of the Litany of Saints. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy Angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Francis Saviour, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, Pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena. Pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus. Pray for us. Saint Anthony of Padua. Pray for us. Saint Charles Borromeo. Pray for us. Saint Mark. Pray for us. All holy men and women saints of God. Pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope 
in all the ordained and faithful service to your church. Glorious in hear our prayer. Bless this chosen man. Glorious you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify this chosen man. Glorious you hear our prayer. Sanctify and consecrate this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord Graciously hear our petitions, O Lord, and pour out upon this your servant the power of your blessing flowing from the horn of priestly grace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bishop Yannick has been lying prostrate during the Litany of Saints as an act of humility. That is a part of the rite of ordination for deacons, priests, and bishops. And now he approaches Archbishop, who will be the first to impose hands on Bishop Yannick's head. The laying on of hands is the sign of apostolic unity, apostolic succession. The laying on of hands for the bishops is in an unbroken chain from the days of the apostles themselves. And now the co-consecrators lay hands on Bishop Yannick. Bishop Mike Boulet. Bishop Mike was Bishop Yannick's spiritual director when he was a seminarian at Assumption Seminary in San Antonio. His Eminence, Daniel Cardinal DiNardo. And Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio, the Ambassador of Pope Francis. Now the other bishops who are present will come forward and lay their hands on Bishop Gary Yannick, 15th Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of San Antonio.
Bishop Yanta imposes hands on young Bishop Yannick. What a beautiful gesture of fidelity. And now the prayer of consecration. The book of the Gospels is held over the new bishop's head. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be, and who lay down observances in your church through the word of your grace, who from the beginning foreordained a nation of the just, born of Abraham, who established rules and priests, and did not leave your sanctuary without ministers, and who from the foundation of the world were pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Pour out now upon this chosen one, that power which is from you, the governing spirit, whom you have given to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the spirit whom he bestowed upon the holy apostles, who established the church in each place as your sanctuary for the glory and unceasing praise of your name. Grant, O oh Father, knower of all hearts, that this your servant, whom you have chosen for the office of bishop, may shepherd your holy flock, serving you night and day, may fulfill before you without reproach the ministry of the light of the high priesthood, so that always gaining your favor, he may offer up the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit of the high priesthood, he may have the power to forgive sins according to your command, assign offices according to your decree, and loose every bond according to the power given by you to the apostles. May he please you by his meekness and purity of heart, presenting a fragrant offering to you through your, your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, Archbishop Gustavo will anoint Bishop Gary's head with the sacred chrism. This is the holy oil over which the Holy Spirit is invoked during Holy Week at the Chrism Mass. It is the oil which is used at baptism for children, again at confirmation, at the ordination of priests to anoint their hands. And now in the Episcopacy, Bishop Gary will be anointed on his head with the sacred chrism. You may notice that they are using special vestments, special garments. The Archbishop is wearing the gremial. 
because uh, this is not what you would call a typical anointing. This is truly a pouring out of the oil of gladness over the head of Bishop Yannick, a sign of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon him. He is anointed now into the fullness of the priesthood of Jesus Christ. May God, who has made you a sharer of the high priesthood of Christ, himself pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of his spiritual blessings. The use of the chrism oil finds its origins all the way back in the times of the Old Testament when the sacred oil was used to anoint priests, prophets, and kings. It is a perfumed oil. It is an oil that is mixed with the essence of balsam. It has a very distinct and beautiful smell. The Archbishop's hands are cleansed with water and lemon. Bishop Yannick is cleaning himself as he re-enters the sanctuary. And now the symbols of his office as bishop will be presented to him. First, the book of the Gospels. Bishop Gary. receive the gospel, and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Bishop Gary receives the gospels symbolically. The next symbol of his office to be presented to him is the ring. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, adorned with the undefiled faith, preserve and blemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. The ring is a symbol of a spousal union that Bishop Gary now has in the care of the church as a husband cares for his wife and his family. Receive the mitre, and may the splendor of holiness shine forth in you, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may deserve to receive from him an unfading crown of glory. The mitre is the hat which is worn by the bishop. It is a, a symbol of his office, of his authority, 
and the front and the back of the mitre represent the fullness of the scriptures, the Old Testament, the New Testament, a symbol of the fullness Receive of his Receive the crozier, priesthood. the sign of your pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the church of God. The crozier, crozier, also known as a shepherd's staff, is given to the bishop as a sign of his pastoral care for the Holy Spirit of God. You see, this is a very emotional moment for Bishop Gary. No doubt with many thoughts about his family, about the people of Victoria, whom he has served so faithfully and so well. He now receives the sign of peace from his brother bishops as they welcome him into the rank of the episcopacy of our Catholic Go Church. Into the world, hallelujah, and teach all nations, Our newly consecrated Bishop Gary Yannick now takes his place in the sanctuary with his brother bishops as our Holy Mass continues. In this archdiocese, he will be serving 1.2 million Catholic people and a total population of over 3 million in 19 counties which constitute the Archdiocese of San Antonio. He will be working with 334 brother priests, 338 permanent deacons, over 600 religious sisters and seminarians who are studying for the priesthood for the Archdiocese, numbering 21. Oh. Uh -huh. 
The bread and wine are prepared for the Eucharistic sacrifice. The Archbishop has offered the prayer, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Taking the chalice filled with wine and mixed with the water, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine, and the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. The Archbishop will now incense the gifts of the altar, the bread and wine, which represents all that we have and all that we can offer to the Lord. The gifts of the bread and wine and the altar itself are incensed by the Archbishop as he finishes the incensation of the altar. The deacon of the altar will then take the censer and offer that incensation to the Archbishop and the other bishops, to the priests and deacons, and to all the people of God, that we may all be a worthy offering to the Lord. The Holy Eucharist is both a banquet and a sacrifice. It is the sacrifice of Christ himself to the Father, and it is the banquet of the heavenly bread by which we are fed and nourished for our pilgrimage of faith and life. Deacon of the altar has incensed the two principal concelebrants, Bishop Mike Boulet and Bishop Gary Yannick. He now offers the incensation to the other bishops who are present. And now to the priests and deacons who are gathered. for the people of God to stand up and they too will receive the incensation that all the baptized may offer their lives as a living sacrifice for the salvation of the world.
believe, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Acepta, Señor, con agrado la ofrenda que te presentamos por tu iglesia y por tu siervo Gary, obispo. Y ya que le has otorgado la plenitud del sacerdocio, concédele la abundancia de las virtudes apostólicas para bien de tu Grey, por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. El Señor esté con ustedes. Levantemos el corazón. Demos gracias al Señor nuestro Dios. En verdad es justo y necesario, es nuestro deber y salvación darte gracias siempre y en todo lugar, Señor Padre Santo, Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno. Ya que por la unción del Espíritu Santo constituiste a tu unigénito pontífice de la Alianza Nueva y Eterna, y en su designio salvífico has querido que su sacerdocio único se perpetuara en la iglesia, en efecto, Cristo no solo confiere la dignidad del sacerdocio real a todo su pueblo santo, sino con especial predilección elige a algunos de entre los hermanos y mediante la imposición de las manos los hace partícipes de su misterio de salvación, a fin de que renueven en su nombre el sacrificio redentor. Preparen para tus hijos el banquete pascual. Fomenten la caridad en tu pueblo santo. Lo alimenten con la palabra. Lo fortifiquen con los sacramentos. Y consagrando su vida a ti y a la salvación de sus hermanos, se esfuercen por reproducir en sí mismos la imagen de Cristo. Y te den un constante testimonio de fidelidad y amor. Por eso, Señor, con todos los ángeles y los santos, te alabamos cantando llenos de gloria. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and made them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to his setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostle and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Gustavo, our Bishop, and me, your unworthy servant. who has been ordained today as shepherd for the Church of San Antonio. With the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own, listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. We hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed and transformed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day the bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look at the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Dense fraternalmente una señal de paz. And now the sign of peace for all the faithful is shared at the end of the Eucharistic prayer and the Lord's Prayer. The bishops, priests, deacons, and people of God will now prepare for the reception of Holy Communion which is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We see Archbishop Gustavo greeting Bishop Gary's mother and members of his family. Bishop Gary greets his own mother. Of course, during this time of COVID pandemic, we can't be as warm as we might like to be in regular times, but still that gesture of peace is sincere and a sign of great love. The Lamb of God, Cordero de Dios. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. But I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As Archbishop Gustavo and the principal concelebrants receive Holy Communion, soon the other bishops will receive, along with the priests and deacons and the people of God. For those of us who are watching by video, by television, we are not able to take communion physically, but we invite the Lord spiritually into communion. We ask that we may receive him spiritually, that he may grace our hearts, and that we may be thankful to him. as a Catholic people, communion is something that is very important. 
communion is sacramental in the reception of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which has been sacrificed upon the altar. Communion is also a spiritual reality. We are united with one another in the mystical mystical body of Christ. We are in union with each other in our faith. Whether we are bishops or priests, deacons, consecrated men or women, men and women of God, the lay people, we have one faith, one Lord, one baptism. We are one in our faith with the Holy Father in Rome, with Daniel Cardinal DiNardo, whom we see in his prayer and song after having received Holy Communion himself, we try to live a visible unity so that the world may know that Christ is truly risen and that he is among us. As we witness the distribution of Holy Communion today, let's take this as an opportunity to offer special prayer for Bishop Gary. We can only imagine what is in his mind and his heart today. Probably as a young man, he never imagined a moment like this. now given the responsibility of the successor to the apostles. Memories of his own father passed away in 1998. Prayer for his sister who is in the hospital right now. We see him offering the blessed sacrament to his own uh, siblings. his nieces and nephews who are present with us today. After the reception of Holy Communion, typically we take a moment to offer prayers of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving that the Lord has come to us. Thanksgiving that our sins have been forgiven. Thanksgiving that we are bound toward heavenly union with Christ. We also want to take this opportunity to be thankful in a very concrete way we want to thank Archbishop Gustavo for his leadership of the Archdiocese of San Antonio and for Bishop Mike Boulette, who has worked so closely with him, continues to do so. We want to thank also our Department of Pastoral Ministries and our Department of Communication, who have worked so hard to prepare um, all of the details for today's ordination. A very special thanks, of course, to Bishop Gary's family because the family was the seedbed of his vocation. So a very special word of thanks to them. Among those who have been serving us today have been Deacon Ramon Figueroa, 
who has been our Master of Ceremonies, assisted by Gilbert Casillas, Gil Montemayor, Michael Coronado, Seminarian, and David Chaco, Seminarian, and the other seminarians who have been serving at today's Mass. We want to thank the members of our choir today, especially Dolores Martinez, who has been our music director. I want to thank all of you who have been praying with us from home on this very beautiful day. We know that uh, Bishop Yannick will be working very, very closely with Bishop Mike Bullet and with Archbishop Gustavo, learning about our archdiocese and assisting his brother priests in their ministry as pastors and parochial vicars, consulting the people of God to make sure that the voice of the laity is heard and understood, and helping our entire church to move forward in the work of evangelization and sanctification, in the works of charity and justice, in this wonderful opportunity to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to our world. I surrender it all to Jesus. I surrender it all to God's will. I surrender it all for the kingdom of God. I surrender my life, my all. I 
surrender my life, my own. As we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, now we must go forward to be he whom we have received. We become his hands, his feet, his voices. We look with his eyes, we hear with his ears. And this is a call that Bishop Gary has responded to his whole life. And now he responds to in a new way. So we all pray this prayer together with him that we will indeed be the body of Christ. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes to which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. are the hands yours are the feet yours are the eyes you you to sing now we are the hands and so on so I'm going to ask you if you feel comfortable just go ahead and raise your hands up offer them to the Lord that you would be his hands his feet his voice his eyes his ears we are the hands feet Ours are the feet, ours are the eyes, ours are the eyes, we are his body, we are his body, no body now but yours no hands no feet on earth but yours yours are the eyes to which he looks compassion on this world Christ has Nobody now on earth but yours. Beautiful moment of sung prayer with John Michael Talbot. We want to thank the people of St. Mark's Parish and Monsignor Kevin Ryan and his staff for hosting us today. What a beautiful parish and how generous they are. Let us pray. Multiplica, Señor, en tu siervo, el obispo Gary, 
los dones de tu gracia que brotan de este sacrificio eucarístico para que cumpla santamente su ministerio pastoral y por su fidelidad en tu servicio reciba de ti el premio eterno. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Please be Well, Bishop Gary will finally be given the opportunity to say a few words today. He has been the object of uh, the ordination today, but now we have the opportunity to hear directly from him. When I spoke with my mom prior to the announcement of my appointment, as Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of San Antonio, her first words to me were, but you're not from San Antonio. <laughs> well, Mom, I am now. <laughs> si ahora lo estoy. La gratitud llena mi corazón hoy. Os agradezco vuestra presencia aquí y los agradezco a nuestro Dios amoroso. Gratitude fills my heart this day for so many, most especially our loving and merciful God. Thank you, Archbishop Pierre, for your presence with us here today as an extension of His Holiness, Pope Francis. Please confer to our Holy Father our love for Him and the assurances of our prayers for his universal ministry. I am humbled by the trust he has placed in me by appointing me as an auxiliary bishop to this historic and faith-filled archdiocese. I also appreciate the presence of his eminence, Cardinal DiNardo. Thank you for being with us this day. Archbishop Gustavo, Bishop Michael, Bishop Cahill, and Bishop Fellhauer, in a special way, muchas gracias, thank you. Thank you for your kindness, and for your ongoing support. Since February 1st, when Archbishop Pierre informed me of the appointment, you have provided guidance and exemplified calm and peace to me in a world of mine that wasn't so peaceful in my heart. I am also grateful for the presence of so many bishops here at this ordination mass. I appreciate your prayers and your support and your letters that you sent to me and, and phone calls as I join with you in the Episcopal ministry entrusted to us. To the priest and religious men and women and the faithful from the Archdiocese of San Antonio and the Diocese of Victoria, thank you for being here to celebrate this sacrament. I'm grateful for the almost 33 years I've had the opportunity to serve in the presbyterate of the Diocese of Victoria. We will always be connected by the priesthood we share. I look forward to serving with the faithful and devoted priests, many of whom are here today, of the Archdiocese of San Antonio. This day is about the glory of God and joining together in the praise of his holy name. In realidad, todo tiene que ver con Jesucristo y nuestro servicio a él. I am grateful for all who did so much to prepare for the celebration, including the archdiocesan choir and the office of worship, and there's so many that I want to say by name because I've learned their name, but I can't because I will leave too many people out. So I will say to the many members of the various departments at the Pastoral Center, under the guidance and the wonderful leadership of Bishop Michael. I'm also grateful to Monsignor Kevin Ryan and the parishioners and staff of St. Mark Catholic Church that have hosted us today. I appreciate your hospitality. Thank you for all of your attention to so many details. 
I was once not long ago the rector of the cathedral, so I know all about hosting big events. And in the end, it's usually the pastor and the staff that has to clean the bathrooms. <laughs> if I can help you after this, please let me know. <laughs> I also thank John Michael Talbot for sharing his gifts with us today. I will be forever grateful to John Michael and to Viola and to his community for introducing me a long time ago to the beautiful people of Nicaragua. And the opportunity to spend so much time at that mission that you once sponsored on the island of Omotepe, it changed my ministry and it greatly shaped my priesthood. So many were poor and it was the first time in my life that I met people who were hungry. But their faith in Jesus was so strong. And in ministering to them, they in fact, of course, ministered to me. Los pobres. Tienen mucho que compartir y enseñar. They taught me how to hunger more for Christ and how much the people of God hunger for priests who will love them unconditionally and lead them closer to Christ. I will never forget the first time I was to celebrate Mass in a little mission on the island. I asked the missionary, what do I say to the people? And he said, Father, just tell them that God loves them. That's what I've done for the rest of my priesthood. Just tell people that God loves them. To my family, thank you for your love and support. I pray my father who died 22 years ago when I was very young, and I pray that he is resting in God's peace. He taught me and my brother and my sisters the importance of education and working hard. His one brother is left here, my uncle Victor. I'm so glad he could be here of the nine children. There's one surviving. They were very poor in growing up, but they had a strong faith. By the witness of my father's life, he exemplified how important it is to think less of myself and more of God and others. He truly embodied the scripture passage from St. Luke. When you have done all that you've been commanded to do, say we are unprofitable servants. We've done what we were obliged to do. And to my mother, who at 87 years of age is filled with faith and more energy than most of us probably here in this church, Thank you for teaching me how to pray and how to love Jesus. I'm grateful for my sister Cindy and her husband Larry, and their children are here, but my sister Cindy and her husband could not be here today. She continues to her treatment for bone marrow cancer and is right now in MD Anderson and praying this Mass with us by means of social media. And she's strong, and I pray for her healing. To my brother Alan and to his wife Jeannie and their children, thank you for always helping me to trust God more and to enjoy the gift of family. And to my youngest sister Sharon and her husband Jake and their children, thank you for your acceptance and for your unconditional love. My eight, soon to be nine, great nieces and nephews, they're almost all here except the little ones. They're the joy of my life. And I am their Uncle G, and I love them dearly. Indigno como estoy para esta oficina, estoy listo para servir. Unworthy as I am for this office, with all my weaknesses and all my, dis my deficiencies, I'm ready to serve. Once you come to know my heart, you will, be, you will find that I have a very simple faith and that I trust in Jesus and that I've dedicated my life to the service of the church. Now more than ever, I believe we can read the signs of the times and recognize the call extended to all of us to return to the practice of our Catholic faith, to take time every day for prayer and the importance of the reception of reconciliation and the Eucharist. 
we are hungry. And we have only to look around and recognize that our technology and, that our, and our wealth and our politics will not feed us. Only Christ can feed us. See, sí, solo Cristo puede alimentarnos. Pope Francis has said, Jesus announces to us that God is not an idea or an abstract doctrine, but God is the one who contaminates himself with our human woundedness and is not afraid to come in contact with our wounds. My priesthood began the day that I embraced my own brokenness. It was then and only then that I was able to find ways to reach the hearts of those who were equally broken. And in ministering to God's people, I've come to better understand over the years the words of Psalm 34, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. In our woundedness, the church is called to offer healing and hope. If anything has prepared me for this responsibility to serve the church as a bishop, it's not found in the degrees that I've obtained or the doses and responsibilities that have been entrusted to me, but in the sacraments that I've celebrated, the people I've buried, including too many children and teenagers and young adults, including my nephew Brandon. It's found in the spouses that I've known that through their struggling in their marriages, they chose to fight for their sacrament. And in the incredible faith of God's people who in their hurt and pain embraced the suffering Christ. Indeed, if anything has prepared me for this ministry, it is walking the journey of faith with the hurting and the confused and the dying and humbly embracing the trust people have placed in me for one reason and one reason only. And every priest in this church knows it. I am a priest of Jesus Christ. It is because they trust us, because we are. And to faithfulness we are called. Soy sacerdote de Jesucristo. There has never been a more exciting time to be a Christian, to be a Catholic right now. And not because the times are easy, but because they're difficult. It is in these challenging times we boldly proclaim that we are the body of Christ. And the Catholic Church is alive and well. Si somos el Cristo, de, de cuerpo de Cristo y la iglesia católica está viva y bien. And those considering a possible vocation to the priesthood or religious life dare to say yes. The church needs you. God is calling you. La iglesia te necesita. Dios te está llamando. As a bishop, I want to join with you in helping to bring about so many in the fold who have left the practice of their faith, that we can help them again to find truth in the gospel in standing up for life and protecting the right of all to be born with dignity and with the gift of life from the moment of conception until natural death. I stand ready to assist you, Archbishop Gustavo and Bishop Michael, and the dedicated and faithful priest of this archdiocese and the deacons and the consecrated men and women and the devoted lay leaders and God's faithful of this archdiocese of San Antonio and bringing to a hurting and broken world the good news of Jesus Christ. To say to those who are wounded and to those who feel even hurt by the church that forgiveness is possible, that God loves us, and that we can join together in following Christ as members of the church that he has given to us and the Catholic church that he has promised to protect until the end of time. May God give me, his weak servant, a listening heart.
can hear the response of the people of God to those very heartfelt and beautiful words from our new Bishop Gary Yannick. And now taking his crozier, he will be led through the assembled people of God this is our to bishop. offer his bishop Amen. his Episcopal <laughs> blessings. to Archbishop Gustavo and Bishop Mike Boulet. All of us, we have in the last page of your program the consecration to the Holy Spirit, a consecration that Pope Francis blessed us with a few years ago and as we consecrated the Archdiocese to the Holy Spirit, let us all pray. O oh, Holy Spirit, receive the perfect and complete consecration of my whole being. In all my actions, grant me the grace of being my light, my guide, my strength, and the love of my heart. 
I surrender myself to you, and I ask you for the grace to be faithful to your inspiration. Holy Spirit, transform me through Mary and with Mary into a true image of Christ Jesus for the glory of the Father and the salvation of the world. Amen. All the thank yous have been done, but I just need to thank Bishop Mike and the committee who led us all into service these days. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And thank you, the committee. I'll bow for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And as he has willed to set you a high priest over his people, so may he make you happy in this present life and grant you a share in the happiness that is eternal. Amen. May he grant that the clergy and people he has chosen to unite by his gracious help be happily governed by his providence and your stewardship for many years to come. May they obey God's commandments, freed from adversity, and may they abound in all that is good, submitting in faith to your ministry so that they may enjoy peace and tranquility in the present age, and with you be found worthy to share the company of the citizens of eternity. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and glorify the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. There is a reception across the way for everybody. Wait for, for Gary there. We're going to take a few pictures here with his family, and he'll be over there as soon as he can. Brothers and sisters, this has been a presentation of Catholic Television in San Antonio, produced and directed by CTSA. We want to thank all of you for tuning in with us today. Please continue to pray for Bishop Gary. I'm Father Larry Christian.
The Episcopal Ordination of Auxiliary Bishop Gary Yannick is brought to you by St. Mary's University and the University of the Incarnate Word. Congratulations, Bishop Janik, on your ordination as Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of San Antonio. I and all of us at St. Mary's University look forward to working with you to deepen and enrich the faith of San Antonio's Catholic community to better serve them and all those in need of Christ's infinite mercy. God bless you and congratulations. The University of the Incarnate Word would like to congratulate the very Reverend Gary Yannick on his ordination to Auxiliary Bishop of San Antonio on this truly historic day. Founded in 1881 by the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word, UIW exists to inspire students to live life to its fullest sense with the genuine abundance of God's love and grace. Our history is founded in service to others, and it remains one of our core values today. We pray that Auxiliary Bishop Yannick will continue to thrive in his call to be of service. 